the DIY filmmaker says, Ben, I love your videos on MFT. I don't know exactly why. Your MFT videos look better than the Sony ones. Ooh, Sony. Sony gonna be mad when they see this. In your MFT videos, colors look more crispy and you look closer to the camera and to your audience. We can nearly touch you. Do y'all wanna touch me? Is that a thing? What if you could actually reach through these screens and touch a YouTuber? That'd be kind of interesting. Would you want to touch me? What do you think I would smell like? How do you know I've showered today? These are a lot of good questions you've probably asked yourself quite often. This video is all over the place too, by the way. This is an experiment, so I hope you're enjoying it. Leave a thumbs up below. Subscribe as YouTubers such as myself will force you to do. So I just released a video where I talked about my favorite lenses for Micro Four Thirds. And it got me thinking about some of the lenses that I haven't used much in the past several months slash over a year probably, but I still have them. And some of them actually had dust on them when I took them out to make that video. And by the way, if you haven't seen that video, I will link it below. And what you are seeing right now is the Panasonic 14 millimeter F 2.5 lens. So I plopped this lens on the Panasonic G9. How does it look? What do y'all think about how it looks? Some people have commented in my videos that Panasonic colors look better than Sony and there's something crispier about them. If you think that I look really crispy right now, let me know in the comments just how crispy you think I am. Am I a pile of Asian French fries? Am I a pile of extremely unstable and unsafe to eat fermenting potato chips? Burnt tires on the ground that have been melted down and then the sun actually used its gases to make it into a crispy pancake? How crispy am I? on a scale of one to 11. I don't really honestly know the technical characteristics or specifics of this lens because I am not the most technical photographer out there. This lens is really awesome. That's really why I'm making this video. You don't need fancy equipment to make really powerful content. There are some YouTubers that I admire that make their entire channel using just their phones, and they don't even have a microphone, they don't have lights, they don't have anything fancy, they don't have a studio, come on now. What makes their channel so amazing is they have an amazing personality, or they're funny as hell, or they just are really passionate about something and that really translates into videos. But stay on topic, Ben. So one of my favorite things about this lens, besides me not knowing a single thing about it and it having awesome image quality, as you can see, is there is this wide angle adapter, which is a separate purchase, but this thing allows you to have Honestly, I can't remember the amount of more magnification, but it gives you a wider view in this lens. So I'm just gonna pop it on right now and show you what I'm talking about. Can you see how much wider it is now? Oh, the problem with this though is it's hard to actually screw in. Come on now. So there you go, it's screwed in. So now it's even wider, but the quality still looks good. And I don't see a lot of, you know, weird, banding or you know issues with colors bleeding in the corners which some of these wide angle adapters would actually cause. I think this is an actual amazing setup for doing YouTube, for doing filmmaking. Before I flip the camera around so you don't have to stare at my pores, I also wanted to mention that this lens, the 14 millimeter f2.5 lens, you can find these used on eBay because the lens is super old and nobody really wants it apparently, but you can find them for like 150, 100. I mean, sometimes you can even get super lucky and find like an old Panasonic GF3, which was my baby. That was my first Micro Four Thirds camera. That one actually came with this 14 millimeter lens. And if you could even find one of those, like get the camera body with the lens on eBay or something for like a hundred bucks, that might exist. And you might get really lucky and get this lens. I'm using this lens in 2020 on a G9 and look how fantastic it looks. It looks cute, right? Do I look cute? When I make this face? <laughs> So now I'm shooting on the other side of the camera and don't you miss my pores? You might miss my pores already. This is a small 
alien hand-painted thing that a friend gave me at a rave a few years ago. And it's one of those objects that as soon as I touch it, it sparks joy and brings back really cool memories. And it has this dimple on the top of it that looks kind of like a alien butthole. And another object that I like to use and talk about apparently with myself in my own thoughts is this skull. And this skull is actually a maraca. It has like little beads or alien eyeballs inside of them or crumbs. Where was this made? This is called Bead Brain Skull Shaker on the wall production. This was made in the freaking USA, y'all. But also check out the bokeh in the background right now. Would you believe that the lens combo I'm using, the 14 millimeter with the wide angle adapter, is about 250, maybe $200 for all that? You might think that I spent a ridiculous amount of money and sold a couple of my kidneys and my liver just to get the lens to film this, but you were wrong, damn it, you were wrong. I'm using a really cheap setup. I fooled you, ha 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 ha. I don't know if I fooled you. I don't think you really care. You're getting into my deep thoughts right now. That's some juicy bokeh and I can actually get pretty good close-ups. Like this subject right now is only, I don't know, maybe two and a half, three inches away from the lens and it is in focus. You can even see the creases in my fingers. Like check out my fingers right now. There's wrinkles happening. That doesn't mean I'm aging. That means I'm intelligent. What else can I show you in my studio here? How's the autofocus? Is it going to adjust? There we go. And there is a bit of a wide view, which is kind of nice going through a weird minimalist phase. And for me, this is actually pretty minimal. I have some headphones, an old mask, and a couple other little knickknacks, but just trying to define, you know, what's actually really important to me, such as this really cool sculpture. And this is a good color test or something. And my studio is actually pretty low light right now and I have the ISO set to ISO auto. This is a pretty low light situation right here. This is a crystal skull, it's filled with alcohol. I don't drink alcohol, it always just tasted like poison to me. But in low light, I mean, check out those details, y'all. Also, this is a stuffed animal that I made in home ec class, I think, back in, I don't even remember the year, but I was probably like maybe 11 or 12 when I made this, and I actually stayed after class to make this panda bear. I was like obsessed, and the, even the teacher was like, okay, I need to go home now. Are you almost done, Ben? Here are a few things that I need to take care of for my YouTube channel, such as this gimbal that was sent to me recently called the Mini MX by Moza. Check out that autofocus action with this lens, y'all. This is another thing that a friend of mine gave me. It says purple pain instead of purple rain, you know, prints. So anyway, what do you think about this lens? This is a pretty cool lens. I am really enamored with it and I haven't used it in a really long time but even the stabilization looks pretty decent. This lens doesn't have an internal stabilizer or anything fancy, but now you're seeing how I film my videos. I have this camera right here, which is my main camera. The Sony a6400 16 millimeter Sigma lens, and this is like my go-to YouTube camera. And then we have this light, which is a newer um, panel light, which I actually don't know what the model number is on this, but I probably should mention that in the description below. <laughs> this video is so informal. And then there's an eyeball inside of some hypercolor stuff. And that's my studio. And it's 4.53, which means the cicadas are about to start making a lot of noise. And it's gonna be really distracting for me. So maybe that's where I'll stop this video. I really just wanted to show you some quick examples of the 14 millimeter f2.5 lens, but not really go into anything scientific or detailed about it. It's just a really awesome lens combo. I'll link to it in the description below. But yeah, it's a really fun lens and it's so lightweight and tiny. And there's something nice about using old gear, like it still works, obviously, in 2020. And you could just spend a couple hundred bucks and have a really solid YouTube slash creation lens. So you can make things like videos like this. 
Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching this incredibly experimental and whimsical video, and I'll see you in the next experience simulation. Goodbye. Can y'all hear that? These freaking cicadas. I need to get out of here. Now there's a dog. Creatures are stalking me. Get me out of here. Send help. Help me. Help me.